Hey, what's up guys? It's Austin here at First Build and today I want to highlight a new project that we've been developing. It's a custom made puzzle. Let's go check it out. You want to make a custom puzzle? Well, here's how we do it. First, you got to start with an image. So we chose to use AI to generate our image. And I had it generate an image representing the things from Louisville, Kentucky, because that's where all this really started. So I'm gonna download this, and then we're gonna hop over to the computer lab and use Illustrator to generate our file to print. So when I'm making this file, I really just wanna set up my, my uh, artboard to be the size of the plotter paper that we have, and that's our large format printer that will print out um, this picture on photo paper. So um, the photo paper we have is 42 inches wide, and so that's the size I made my artboard. Now I'm gonna import my picture and uh, drop it in, and I'm gonna print two just so I use up more of that paper so I'm not wasting material. That's very important. And I'm gonna also set the size of the puzzle to be, to be about 16 by 16 inches. All right, so our puzzle vector generator is on telenome.org. Um, and this allows you to customize every single aspect of a, of a puzzle. Um, so you set the size, everything's in millimeters, so just, just keep that in mind. Um, so I'm gonna set the size of my puzzle, and then I'm uh, also gonna tell it um, how many puzzle pieces tall and puzzle pieces wide. Um, I did generate a square puzzle uh, picture, so uh, the puzzle pieces are gonna be equal so I'm gonna generate a puzzle. Uh, I, I'm gonna generate a vector for a 100-piece puzzle. And I think that'll be great for the image size that we chose. So now I'm gonna click download the SVG file, and that is actually gonna be the vector file that's gonna cut um, out the individual puzzle pieces. So what I'm gonna do here next is I'm gonna overlay the puzzle vectors on the image and just give myself a, a, little, a little margin around the perimeter of the puzzle just so I don't have to be as accurate when I place it into the laser. All right, so I'm gonna set up a new artboard uh, set to the sizes of our paper roll on the plotter. Uh, it's 42 inches wide, so I'm gonna drop in uh, two pictures just to save on material so I'm not wasting anything. And we're gonna, we're gonna save this as a PDF on a flash drive and bring it over to the plotter so we can print this out. All right, so once I got my puzzle vector sized, I'm actually going to um, change the vector line colors uh, for the vertical and horizontal puzzle piece cuts, and I'm gonna separate that from the outside um, bounding box of the puzzle, just so that I can ensure that the laser cuts, you know, the horizontal vertical lines first, and then cuts around the outside of the puzzle last. So I'm gonna export my file onto this flash drive, and we're gonna go over to the plotter and print it out. And while we wait on that, I'm gonna to go to the tool wall and get some tools, an X-Acto knife and a ruler. And that's gonna help me cut out these pictures and prepare the, the puzzle to be on the laser. So I'm gonna bring it over to the work table and we're gonna, we're gonna get this thing ready for the laser. So I'm gonna cut out the image and then I need to laminate the image to the backer board. In this case, it's a 16th inch chipboard. That's what I found to be the best thing so far. It kind of feels and looks like a puzzle. Um, we're gonna use some photo safe spray glue to laminate those two together. So you just spray liberally some glue on both, on both surfaces, let it tack up for a few minutes, press those two together very well, um, and then cut off any excess. Um, it's kind of up to you. Now that we prepped our, our image to our backer, we're gonna bring that to the laser and cut this puzzle out. All right, so we're at the laser. I'm gonna place in my material. I'm gonna use a couple off cuts to space my work away from the, the corner of the laser bed. And then now I'm going to uh, show you guys uh, uploading this vector into the laser control software and how to program the laser and how to get this thing going. All right, so this is the control software for the, for the laser cutter. First thing we're gonna do is import our file. I'm gonna click the plus sign down here and I'm gonna go to the flash drive and locate the puzzle vector. I'm gonna click import. So once this loads, <clears throat> I'm gonna set up my, my, uh, my, my two tool paths uh, for this job. And the first one, I'm gonna do a 
the, the blue vectors. That's gonna be the first tool path I'm gonna make. So it's gonna be a custom vector. I'm gonna assign uh, the color slate blue and give both lasers 100% power. I'm gonna turn my flow rate down to low. And um, the laser speed, I'm gonna keep at about uh, 6% and then change my PPI to 1,000. I'm gonna do the same thing for the outline, which is the red vector. Gives me another custom vector. Sign the color red. Full power on both lasers. And then um, still 6% speed. Uh, 1000 PPI. And low flow rate as well. <clears throat> and just kind of what we discovered over time is, you know, having, the, having this air flow rate on low just keeps um, any, any puzzle pieces from being blown around by the laser. So that's what that's for. We're gonna save both of those tool paths. And so here it's very important, um, just as you would with any CNC machine, the order of the tool paths is the order the laser's gonna go in. So it's gonna cut the blue vectors first and the red vectors second. Um, and then now that we're here, I'm just gonna probe. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna probe around the outside perimeter and um, just verify that this puzzle vector is gonna fall within uh, the points that we think it is. So I'm clicking each point here on this um, selection grid and then move nozzle to point. So that's what I'm clicking here. I'm going around all four sides and just verify, verifying that it falls within the boundary. <clears throat> all right, so now that I've done that, everything looks great, we're gonna click start. I just really wanted to share this project with you guys um, just to show uh, what's possible here in the space given the equipment we have. Um, and, and, and really, I just want to um, make this really accessible for people, um, whether coming into the Louisville First Build location in their makerspace, or if you come to our makerspace here in Stanford, Connecticut. Um, this is something you can do very easily. It only takes about 20 minutes worth of time. Please check down in the description. We're gonna uh, provide uh, a free resource for you guys if you're interested in making this puzzle. So be looking out for that. And thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Have a good one.